Where do you think Sauce Erickson is from? Well, I mean, you got to know the NHL. He's you know, from it's... Lulia, Sweden. Football is over, but love has just begun. Football's Valentine's been Day over. is yeah, that's true. Ever since the Lions are gone, but love is around the corner, Maddie. Is because it? Valentine's Day is here, and for all of you single people, all of you lonely folks, if you're worried that you don't have a Valentine, you do. You have us. So your parasocial relationship. You need to put all of your energy and love towards us, and um, yeah, we'll give you some cool content. There you go. Great deal, right? No. What about you, Maddie? What are you What are you doing for Valentine's Day? Shut the fuck up, Jake. No, that wasn't meant to be pointed. That was like a genuine question. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? Um, getting stoned and watching a movie. <laughs> I actually, I don't have any plans yet. You don't have any plans yet, listeners. If you want to take Maddie no. to do something for Valentine's no. Day, no. <laughs> Unless you're paying, then maybe. Unless you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie no. wants to go to Fat Daddy's Fried Chicken. Oh my god, I would love to go to Fat Daddy's. If you are listening and you live in the metro Detroit area, which I think most people who listen, there's this place downriver. I think it's a literally called a river view. It's this riverside, some bullshit made up ass city. As most downriver is. Right. There's nothing else there, but there's this beautiful... It's not beautiful. It's run down. It's a hole in the wall. <laughs> it's not beautiful. It's beautiful once that food hits your mouth because Fat Daddy's. You know what, Jake? I'm gonna ask them to sponsor us because yes. this is free free promo. No, that place fucking rocks my socks. I have never had a better chicken sandwich. And look at me. I've had a few chicken sandwiches in my life, and theirs was just honestly the best chicken sandwich I've ever had. Holy shit. Yeah. I had one in Nashville that was like otherworldly. It was from, I think, not Hattie B's. There's another chain down there that's really, I have really no good. idea. You could say anything right now, and I'd just say any. Fat Mommies. Fat Mommy. Dude, you should open up a restaurant called Fat Mommies. Um, <laughs> because. <laughs> <my turn on. laughs> Why is that, Jake? Because uh, it sounds like my daddy's, but like, you know. Okay, muscle mommies then. Oh, there I you like go. that one. High protein food. <laughs> I mean, fried chicken, it's high in fat, but it's also mm-hmm. high in protein. If you could open a restaurant, though, what kind of restaurant would you open? Fat mommies. Why is that? Because it's like fat daddies, but you. women first. <laughs> Only co- yeah, women first. It's the feminist version of fat daddies. <laughs> oh, my God. What yeah, about like... Feminism. If I, were, if I were you, I would make... Like to try to make like my dad angry because you know he's political. I would say your dad or my dad. Actually, uh, they're kind of the same person. Yeah. You need to go up and be like, they're changing Fat Daddy's chicken's name. It's Fat Days now. <laughs> fat parents. <laughs> fat like parents. <laughs> Gender neutral. <laughs> okay, welcome to three one three hockey. We are now three and a half minutes into banter, and don't worry, there's more where that came from because this that's is it. Another actually, we hit our quota episode. Yep, there we go. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right a let's... lot of things that have happened every week isn't that crazy how life every no. week because i feel like i've been living the same day things just keep happening oh really over and over and over for like months like that black mirror episode when you're in the snow globe you know what I'm like about? that and also like you know that spongebob bit where it shows squidward yes. like going through his routine that's that's me that's me if you ever have to ask do you know that spongebob bit the answer is yes we should do more spongebob bits here I wish we were sillier. That's something cool. we struggle with on this show. That's okay. I wish we had a lot of money. Like, if That's I had okay. wheels, I'd be a wagon. <laughs> I wish I had fucking jiggly ass, juggly ass, triple D boobs. But you know what? I have good news. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's the good? What's the good news? Actually, it's not good news. It's actually quite the opposite. Lucas You're cutting Raymond off my tits. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that fucking sucks. Not only is he hurt. He's hurt in the dumbest way possible. It really be your own people. <laughs> it really be your own people. Yeah. I have a theory that I ben have a Chirac- theory. No, no, wait. Yeah, maybe we have the same theory. theory. I'll tell you mine. All right. My <laughs> my theory, this is this is a galaxy brain. 
my theory, and I feel like you were about to say the same thing, is Ben Chirot really missed being on Cider's D pairing, so he injured Razor. Wait. This Why would he injure Lucas Raymond to be on the defensive because chair? Because he, he knows. Wallman. Can I? Can you let me finish? No, sorry, we don't let women do things here. Well, right, you don't let women finish. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> classic, classic. <laughs> if you would have let me finish with my theory, okay. As you know, by the way, as I'm speaking, make sure you have that meme like with the guy and the strings and the board. Oh my god, the puppet master. <laughs> Lucas Raymond is the known best friend of Moritz Sider on the team. Wallman also got injured. Sherratt was behind this, pulling the strings, knowing that if he injured Raymond and is in... You know what? I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> let, me, let me finish your narrative, because I see where you're going with this. He's isolating Sider. He's he's making him feel like vulnerable and alone. So then he can swoop in and be like, hey, I'm here to save the day. Daddy Sherratt is here. Take over the pairing. You just have to listen Daddy to me Sherratt. and let me go hit people. You just have this. I think you have like a sexual fantasy of Daddy Sherratt. Daddy Sherratt. He kind of is Daddy Sherratt, but everybody hates him. him? <laughs> uh, my theory is that he's a sleeper agent from Montreal. Like when he signed here, he got a call from Montreal and they like said like some code phrase after he started to play well and his eyes rolled in the back of his head and he's like, I will play like shit. I will destroy this team. He's a sleeper agent for like Montreal. He's like, I'm going to keep this team forever. Not good enough to make the playoffs, but not bad enough to tank. You think he has that power? I think he thinks he has that power. Do you think he has that power? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, he's pretty, he's been pretty shitty lately. Like not, he's not very good. The rot and Sherat. Mm hmm. It's not great. Not good folks. Not and good Wallman's folks. out. Yeah. And Wallman has been pretty damn good. I know, both of these know. little guys. And they're both day-to-day, -day, so maybe we'll see them by the time this episode comes out tomorrow night. Um, Wings are about to go on a West Coast trip, so hope, hope you got enough juice in you to stay awake. Knowing our luck with the show, um, they're going to immediately be okay. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, let's talk about the pretty okay Detroit sports update. We got oh, some okay things going on. That's not what I thought you were going to say, and I'm really glad <laughs> that it was that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, speaking of cocaine. I said okay, not cocaine, but now that I know Maddie's oh. mind is on the drugs, let's talk about it. <laughs> okay, Detroit sports update. I'm going to start. Normal transition. <laughs> totally normal and flawless anyway. execution. So last night, the duel in the D uh, took place here in Detroit. And right. for the sixth year in a row, my Michigan Wolverines beat the Michigan State Spartans. And uh, it was a great game, actually. It went into overtime, and they actually played the night before in at the Mun Ice Arena in East Lansing. It was very chippy. Um, the prospective second overall pick, Fantilli, got kicked out of the game, and he did not even play the duel in the D. Yeah, really good shit. Why did he get kicked out? So they were at the – I think it was at the end of the game the night before. I didn't watch that game. I only saw the highlights, but I watched – the game last night uh like they were fighting a lot and i saw like all of the michigan state people on twitter like complaining and being little babies about it and then what, the michigan state twitter complaining i know right my dad's a sparty no, we we know mm. so is mine they they have flaws it's they're, all right they're, just, they're kind of whiny on twitter i'm sorry oh they're I'm sorry it's like a constant underdog thing and it's it gets the really little brother annoying. syndrome yeah of course. Anyway, Fantilli ended up, I, I think he like cross checked someone or it was in the scrum. He got kicked out and then he wasn't able to play last night, but they didn't need him. I don't understand why they call it, why they make such a big deal about a duel with the D. I duel with my D every week and I turn out fine. Jake, can you hit the boo on our soundboard, please? I don't have Here, hold on. I can help. Um, yeah, boo let me yourself. find something fun. Um, boo yourself. That's what I'm doing this Valentine's Day. Booing myself up. Is it playing? No. Damn it. There was a laugh track I was going to play. No, I that that's not the banger. requested sound, dude. But, um, you know, I think that would have been a good hit. Anyway. You can boo my joke, too. It was equally as bad. That's a, I didn't even hear your joke. We oh, don't, I don't listen to women. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of not listening to women. Um, the...
go on. Sadiq Bay got traded. Yeah. Which is really sad from the Pistons. I actually really liked him. Um, I thought he was like a mean motherfucker. But yeah, he was. He Rest got traded peace. to the Golden State Warriors, who then immediately flipped him to Atlanta. Well, no, it was a three-way trade or a four-way trade. Four-way trade, actually, yeah. So there's we a bunch of draft picks that went show. around. We yeah, need but more then, four ways. Did you see? Hockey. We need more four ways in life. We need more. We need more sucking and fucking in hockey. <laughs> <laughs> that took me so off guard. <laughs> no, but <laughs> absolutely agree. But also, <laughs> did you see this drama with the with the the Pistons trade? Because the one guy didn't pass the physical, and it like fucked yeah. everything up. I don't know. It's like I also liked Bay and. As you know, like I'm not the biggest basketball girly, but I know that there are a lot of and slash were a lot of players on the Pistons, like big men, like doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. A little bit redundant still with this roster. We got a lot of different Jalen Duran and James Wiseman are playing pretty much the same position. Yeah, and, and like, like outrageous. Bogdanovich essentially has been like doing Bay's job, so it's like all right, deal. Him. Yeah. It makes sense. I think he's like a fan favorite that got traded, but he isn't like one of those. Why the hell is he a fan favorite? Like Nemestikov no. was, you know, oh. like Nemestikov oh. was like, fine. He was fine. We love talking about him on the show. We do because he just keeps coming up. He just keeps coming up. I just keep seeing things about him, and I'm like, people, why are we so hung up on him? Why, this is like, this wait, is what was like, the tweet I sent you last night? Somebody, it was said, somebody was like. Trade this person for Trade Nemestikov. Trade Bertuzzi for Nemestikov. That's what it was. That's what it was. Bertuzzi for Nemestikov. I like felt my was... brain heat up like a laptop. Like mm. it was like, <laughs> and I couldn't respond to it. It's for a like minute. the dial-up modem from like when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that... what happened. All right. I can't believe that. Why would you want? Why would you want? Speaking of... He's got 11 points. He's kind of sucky. Sorry, go ahead. No, speaking of why would you want... (laughs) Why wouldn't you want Aiden Hutchinson to win? He won the Corporation corporation Yeah, he won the Pepsi Rookie of the Year. Why is that even a fucking thing? Why is uh, that a thing? I want to know how much money Pepsi spent to sponsor a Rookie of the Year thing. Why do you need a Pepsi Rookie of the Year and an actual Rookie of the Year? Not just I, I like that they split up offensive and defensive rookie of the year, and I really wish the NHL would do that. Yeah, I agree. I like that, and I really want like a most improved player award. Mm. Like whether they played like shit last year or like are coming back from like a bad injury. So you like, want participation cool. trophies, is what you're I saying? I do. I you want are... every player to get a little trophy that says you are a winner where it counts. This is what the woke left wants. <laughs> Look at them is again. Is the woke left in the room with us right now? The woke left is in the room with us. <laughs> and his name is Jake Rivard. Uh, speaking of the woke left. Jake Rivard. Mike, Mike Valenti. This is, is, I'm a, it pulled up an old quote from Mike Valenti. Is he the woke friend. left? He is the woke left. He He's said, a friend of the show. Did the Lions make a mistake drafting Aiden Hutchinson? I don't know. What do you think? Did you Did, did your other player win Pepsi Rookie of the Year? I didn't think so. Move on, Valenti. We love you, but move on. Do we love him? I don't know. Some of my friends really like him, but I feel like his whole thing is like, no matter what the Lions do, he's got to be the contrarian who like hates it. That's like a lot of Lions fans, actually. That's kind of lame. That's like a played out bit, you know? Why would you not want to be like, I, you know what? I, I wanted to be like delusionally optimistic to the point where like, yeah, they, they could start the season 0-8 and, and I'm like, still nine games left to play. Okay, okay, well, that's go, kind of that's really not that far off from what they, happened last they season. Get rolling, yeah, yeah, like you know, like we started one and six. Hutchinson did not win defensive rookie of the year. Sauce Gardner did. Which, His name way, is Sauce. Great name. How can you not amazing Sauce? Like I was, I'm, I'm, I do think Hutch should should have won it. But if he's not going to win it, give it to the guy named Sauce. Because give it to the guy named Sauce. That's crazy. If there's ever another guy out there named Sauce, like, let's say 10 years from now, and it's like, you know, the Wings obviously have won three cups in the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And then there's a big contention about, like, Calder, but the guy's name is Sauce Erickson. You got to give it to the Sauce. You got to give it to the Sauce. Well, if it, is, it depends. See Sauce Erickson from Ontario or no. Sauce Erickson from Where do you think Sweden? Sauce Erickson is from? Well, I mean, you got to know the NHL. He's you know, from Lulia, Sweden. 
Okay, well, is there some really shitty Canadian player named like Adam Gardner? Because they're going to give it to Adam Gardner. I'm sorry. I was going to say that's a North American, like generic name. North American. Yeah, I know a lot of Mexicans named Trevor. And you might. I, I have never met a Mexican named Trevor. I oh, I say. have. Yeah? What's his yeah. last name? Lopez. You! <laughs> 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 you motherfucker. <laughs> Trevor Lopez! Lighten up the QMJHL, bro. <laughs> the, or no, the Mexican hockey Ooh. league. Okay, if we... Because, you know, we say North American and we mean, like, Anglo-speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mean Canada and the United States. But I, there's totally... I mean, Mexico's part of North America. Bo. I don't think it gets B -E -A -U, If we're going Bo out, what is a name? You've never is heard that, that a French Canadian name? Yeah, French Canadian name. That's a horrible name. I'm sorry. That's a weak name. Bo? Like Bo is a weak name. Really? Like, like bow and arrow? Like no, B O W. I think there are names that set people up for certain fates. And giving somebody a weak name like Bo. Bo is not a weak name. Bo is weak. I'm sorry. It reminds me of your little bow you put on your, your little suit or your little dress with a bow on it. Okay, how come saying bow and arrow is so ridiculous, but you saying bow spelled the exact same way is not ridiculous? Mm -hmm. Because I said it in a funny voice. You said it in a funny voice. Mm -hmm. That doesn't That's, give it more legitimacy. The ultimate delivery, the ultimate technique is you just have to say something in a funny voice and people take it less seriously. I mean, that's how, like... George Bush did 9-11! <laughs> <laughs> Should we take like, that out? Should that come out? That's how Tucker Carlson made, became famous. Because all he does is say things in voices like this! <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to be Tucker right Carlson cancelled M&M's. That's Why? fucked. Did you not see that? No. He, he got, like, a, he was getting bricked up from, like, the green m and M. so they, like, had to, like, un <laughs> they, like, undid, like, hundreds of years of, like, advertising the because best, Tucker Carlson got turned on by an m and The best bit is when he said, exploding milk porn. What <laughs> is like, that? I don't know. He was talking about, like, hentai, and in the background, oh. there's a picture of a chick with big boobs on Fox News. <laughs> If you came here to listen to this podcast oh, you and want to learn hockey. about hockey, mm, sorry, I will one-up you exploding milk porn, Tucker Carlson. I still don't even know what that was a reference to, but... I have this amazing idea, and <laughs> I'm putting it out here because I think it would be great, and by having it on this recording, it is now trademarked. What? I want to do a murder mystery, but you're all, like, right-wing figures. So there's, like, one character. It's, like, a Ben Shapiro character. And, like, one is, like, Alex Jones. You have, like... That's funny. Uh, Tommy Loren, you know, so on and so forth. And the murder of... It's the murder of Donald Trump. And you have to figure out who did it and why. And everybody has their own motivation. Who did it? Who's the secret liberal? Add in Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis would be a good one, too. I know. He... All right, whenever you're back in Detroit, anyway. I'm going to set this up for us. Yes, that would be amazing. We gotta all get in character, get in costume. It'd be a. I great really time. will do this. I call Jordan Peterson. No, you can't call. It has to be Damn random. It. Okay. All right. Uh, but let's talk I about hockey. Mm. Do, you, do you want? Do you have a thought? Never, <laughs> never no, once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Just do, and I figure it out later, dude. That the, okay? So Max Boltman released a piece from the Athletic. Shout out Max. We love Max. Um, friend of the show. Kind of, I'm just gonna call everyone show. friend of the show, it's even though he's idea, never heard actually. of it. Yeah. Um. And it's kind of heartbreaking. It is really sad. Do you want me to read the quote? So Read that quote. Yeah, so he um, he's interviewing with Max Bultman, and they're talking Verona about his is. future. Yeah, Verona. They're talking about Jacob Verona's future with the Wings. And he said he wants to be a Red Wing for life, and the, the decision isn't his. To be honest with you, I'm a proud Red Wing. I love to have that logo on my chest. I wish I could play for them for the rest of my life. I mean, that's what I want, obviously. Everybody does. Everybody does. That's cool. But... That's looking way too ahead of us right now. I'm just focusing from day to day and to be a part of the team up there again, and the rest will come. I tell you, like, I can't control whatever happens outside with what people's decisions are. I'm just a player, and everybody knows that. Yeah. That hurts. <sighs> Maddie's, Maddie's tearing up a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, like I, like, I mentioned it in jest before, but what the fuck? That's what do they know? What does anybody know? It's so frustrating because I don't know shit about Dick. And I just want some, like, he, 
like the right now the Griffins are garbage, but from what I understand, he has still been consistently been playing mm-hmm. well. And there is some shit going on. I mean, I don't again, I don't want to speculate, of course, but why why do we have all these conditions and they're not moving him onto the roster? You know, that's obviously the you know question. What? You know what? I actually just texted Steve Eiserman and I said, <laughs> uh, why haven't you moved up Verona to the NHL yet? And you know what he responded with? What? I'm shy, LOL. <laughs> Did he do the bottom emoji and like the, the, the hands? T- the yep. fingers touching? <laughs> he is a little shy. He is a little shy. He's just kind of a quiet, soft-spoken man. But it hurts. It hurts to see that. And I think it kind of like fucks with people's perception of steve eiserman especially especially from outsiders oh like my god who, yeah people who don't watch the team are just in this like panic about okay, the people wings. who do watch the team are also oh, yeah. in this panic for the record i feel that like people who watch this team are a little bit more patient or they're willing to give a little more leeway where the people who aren't watching are like why isn't this team immediately amazing mm. or like why isn't this team trying to tank and i'm like you don't know what's going on you have not to be fair attention. i pay pretty close attention and i have both of those thoughts like every day i don't pay attention at all i just make things up i know and it probably shows it does show i think that steve eiserman is completely infallible and to question him means that you should never be a fan again if you question steve eiserman I will gift you a traditional Japanese katana. You will then take the katana, put it through your belly for seppuku, and rit- <laughs> ritualistically kill yourself. That's pretty good. That's pretty dark. Yeah, thank you. I think that if you question Steve Eiserman, what you should really do is question yourself. Right. Look within. Figure out what's what's going wrong. What's going on? Like what's what's really wrong? What's what's been right. troubling you? Why are you questioning? Why? Wh- where has he done you dirty? Okay, what has Ventura- he ever done wrong? Yeah, d- the Ventura Ventura thing's kind of sussy, but like I, I, I see sussy. the vision. I see the vision with it. But also, like I, I feel like a lot of people are very impatient with this team. Like very impatient. They want them to either immediately be a successful playoff team, or mm-hmm. they want them to totally just blow it all up and tank again. I have not seen that many people who are arguing for the latter, to be honest. It's mostly people outside of Detroit that are arguing it. Like, national reporters well, are like, well, it's a, you, you prefer Connor Bernard. Well, they're I like not to, wrong. I like to enrich my point of view, you know, broaden my horizons. Because I feel like, you know, you can get caught in an echo chamber with a lot of, like, certain media figures in Detroit will say the same things over and over and over. Some of them will be will harass certain players for leaving for personal reasons. Helene St. Um, James. Um, yeah. Do Some of them will block you if you ask them a question. Uh, Ansar Khan. <laughs> I am not blocked by him, so Me neither. suck it. I just know a ton of people that are blocked by him. Yeah, that's hilarious. Like one person asked, um, friend of the show asked, he asked Ansar Khan, like, why are we still playing Erickson? This is like a couple <laughs> years ago. And Ansar Khan blocks him. <laughs> I'm going to tweet Ansar Khan. When are the Wings going to draft Sauce Erickson? Sauce Erickson. Dude, I cannot wait. Wait, so you're saying you don't want Bedard? No, I do want I'm Bedard. I'm joking. But don't answer that seriously. No, I, hate, I hate Bedard. I, he's going to be a bust. Thank he's you. He's going to be terrible. Thank you. Why would you want him? Let him fall to ninth overall where the Wings will be picking. Like what happened to Shane Wright <laughs> yes. last season? Oh, yeah, the, all the teams are just gonna <laughs> gonna pass on him. <laughs> I'm thinking that, or maybe they pass on Fantilli. You know, he's got character issues with his yelling at people and getting suspended mm. before the duel in the D. He was dueling with his D that night. That's right, he Rather was dueling. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the the main point I want to make with this this national media thing is that I feel that a lot of our fan base, the rational side, the few, the proud, the brave, understand that patience is important. Look at the Nick Letty trade. I hated that initial trade to get Nick Letty, but then when they flipped him for Wallman, Sunquist, yep. and what could be the 40th overall pick in this next draft, that's pretty damn good. Exactly. So that's what I'm hoping for, like f- with the Ben Sherratt thing. Somehow, the supreme leader, Steven Eiserman, I said Steven, Stephen Gregory. Stephen Gregory. I'm hoping that's what happens and we're able to just do a little flipperoo like HGTV. I'm wondering if a team is going to be like, we need grit and depth in the playoffs. Because, like, apparently Toronto's looking at Tyler Myers. Who I was, is Tyler Myers has been living in my head rent-free this entire week. 
Why? Because uh, I was talking to someone about him. Anytime I go to a bar, it just ends up that a hockey talk. Every time, every time. Actually, for whatever reason, I I was really drunk the other night, and I was in this very heated discussion with like a whole group of dudes just talking about LeBron James. Mind you, I don't even really have very strong feelings about it. But drunk version of me was like standing on a chair, like screaming, talking about you know this LeBron James discussion in the middle What's of your, a, a what, club. What is the Tell me about the Braun James. No, I'm not bringing. Up. I'm not bringing him into this. This is safe space, <laughs> and I don't want to open that can of worms. Braun James, friend of the show. If you're he is listening a friend to of this, the show. Um, please finish that Malcolm X autobiography. You've been on page what? for like, <laughs> like fucking five years. What did you Dude, just... No, literally. What? Look up a picture. Look up LeBron James Malcolm X. Why? There are. Ye- for years he's been reading the autobiography of malcolm x for photo shoots but he only reads up to the first he's always on page 20 he's always like v- at the very beginning of the book and i'm like dude just read it either read it or put it down you know like you want to hear something funny what i don't know if you know this i like to read a lot but i didn't know you could read i'll keep honest- it real yeah it's it's i'm kind of illiterate but at the same time i do be reading and I almost strictly read nonfiction. So I have read a lot of like fucked up books before and I wanted to read Mein Kampf just for my general for knowledge. For research purposes. For research purposes. <laughs> so like when I lived in Germany. Was it readily I mean, available in Germany? No, you can't. You weren't even able to get it in Germany. So I got it in the States. Um, in Germany, if you want to buy it, you have to buy like a version of it that's like three times the actual length because they add oh, like, like little, annotated. yeah, they add little captions like this is not actually what you should believe and blah blah blah. So I like, I was like, all right. Anyway, doesn't look. It's not a good look to be reading that in public. So you know what I do? Did you put a book sleeve on it? No, oh. that would have been much smarter. Instead. I made sure I wore my Star of David necklace anytime I had to wear read it in public. <laughs> Dude, so, yeah, that literally looks like a meme. It like, is if a you meme. you think about it, like you're sitting and reading the book and then you see the Star of David. Like Isn't, it's just complete conflict. Yeah. So I had to show my credentials essentially so they didn't think that I'm like, uh, you know. <laughs> you had to believer. pass the Bible. The Bible check. The Bible I, check. There's a lot of like messed up nonfiction now that I'm thinking about it. There's a lot of <laughs> the Bible, like the amount of like World War. I feel like an old man. I've actually become an old man recently. I've been watching World War II documentaries, thing. yeah, like and Civil War documentaries. Like that's oh, yeah. that's where I'm at right now. I got an Ottoman Empire one I'm doing right now. That's pretty interesting. Mm. Classic Ottoman Empire, so great for its time. Can we talk? Let's talk about the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. It's no, they were, they had some progressive bangers like such as whenever, whenever they took over when they took over Constantinople, they were oh like, "Oh my hey, god, we're not going to force you to convert to Islam. You can be whatever you want to be, and we'll have places like the Hagia Sophia is a religious place for every religion, so you can go in there and worship whatever you want. It's built so that you can get the service you need. Hagia Sophia is where all Red Wings fans actually go to worship Steve Eiserman. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, the gulag is where you go if you don't, in Siberia. I mean, speaking of the Ottoman Empire, I feel like it would be disrespectful now not to mention that terrible earthquake, which has oh killed my God, like yeah. 25,000 people in present-day Constantinople. Can I tell you something bleak? Please. Um, I looked at a graph of like recent search history that day, and it was like LeBron James, <laughs> then the, Gra- the Grammys. And then Turkey. Yeah. And it was like, Turkey was like a third of the searches that LeBron got. Yeah, that's really fucked up. Anyway, um, we at 3 and 3 Hockey love um, you. And <laughs> you got so what the fuck? <laughs> we're a friend of the Ottoman Empire. No, um, we're not. No, we're not. No, the Ottoman Empire is gone and dead. Also, they genocided Armenians. So like, fuck that. Who like, hasn't genocided Armenia, though? Fucking for real. Anyway, Sorry, we're getting deep into history. Let's do a history sidebar one episode. 
we do a history sidebar every episode. That's true. We did get into talk about. All right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> we really got to talk about hockey. Stay focused. Um, there were a couple games that happened last time since last week. Uh, the first being the Edmonton game that doesn't count. I know. I know it doesn't. But we I lost actually have a pretty, five to I have two. a pretty interesting statistic that I want to share with you. Yeah. Um, if you don't count the Red Wings losing streaks this season, they actually are at a 23-7-2 record, which basically puts them <laughs> on the same level as Boston and Colorado. <laughs> That's so good. It wasn't in the notes. It totally took me off guard there. I liked I, also to add on to that, and just going back to, you know, improvements and the way that the our fan base is perceiving the team. Here's here's my quick track to making it to the playoffs and winning the Stanley Cup. This is what I would do personally. I would take every single un, non-performing player on the roster, trade them, and then get good players. I think that's a really good strategy. And if you took all the bad players and replaced mm-hmm. them with good players, this mm-hmm. would be a contender. This would be a real contender. I agree, contender a real contender. Um, have you ever heard of Editor and Leaf? Mm-mm. Editor and Leaf is the most delusional and insane publication I've ever seen in my entire life. Besides like, our Twitter account. <laughs> besides our Twitter account. This this Twitter account will be like, Austin Matthews scored 60 goals in this season, which is more significant than Wayne Gretzky's season where he scored 82 goals in it, the whole season. Like they'll they'll just and they'll try to back it up with like random stats and just random other things. And it's always mm-hmm. like incredibly isolated. So that tweet that I said, the thing that I said, where I said, if you got rid of all the losing streaks, that was yeah. inspired by editor and leaf and how delusional they can be. Oh, one time I said can them, we just start doing that for net from now on? Yes, absolutely. One time I saw them say, if you took out all of the games where Toronto lost by more than one goal, they would be <laughs> they'd have like a perfect record. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the Toronto game last night was really good they played the blue jackets um it almost went to overtime but it was a really good game just putting that out there not relevant to any- i mean is that, that was the one where they played columbus yeah that's pretty sweet okay here here's here's one from editor and saber that makes fun of editor and leaf oh, yeah. since march 1st 20 or 2022 the buffalo sabers have gone 42 26 excluding the fluky eight game streak from this <laughs> season <laughs> that's in six point pace Good enough to be top seed in the Eastern Conference in two of the last three seasons. <laughs> Unbelievable. It was like a random date they picked on the calendar, too. You should um, find a stat for us. It's like from last season and just only cover all those blowouts. Also, when it rains, the Red Wings are undefeated. We've recently learned just now that Jeff Merrick talked about Tyler Bertuzzi asking for a contract extension. What? And the wings have said, you just sent me the thing. It said Jeff Merrick and it said, the. Oh, OK, let me read it out loud. <clears throat> Jeff Merrick <laughs> notes that there were some brief extension talks about Tyler Bertuzzi earlier this season, but nothing serious. Believes Detroit is asking for something substantial in return for Bertuzzi. They want some Healthy of trade interest for Bertuzzi. Dallas, Edmonton and Tampa Bay noted as being in on Bert. They so- want girth. I have heard from a friend of the show, Ryan Hanna, that uh, the show. Bertuzzi is getting traded for Leon Dreisaitl. Mmm, bringing the Germans together. That's now right. Now we need Tim Stutzler, and then we're boom, That was contender. great pronunciation. I'm actually Thank impressed. You. I was trying my best. Are you proud of me? I'm really <laughs> proud of you. Ich bin stolz auf dich. Yeah, I don't know what that means. It means I'm proud of you. Oh, thanks. Back to the Edmonton game. Um, speaking of Leon Dreisaitl. That game was not fun. That was not a good game. They look kind of rusty, but I mean, they haven't played in a while, so to be fair. <laughs> Neither had Edmonton. <laughs> yeah, but they have McDavid and Dreisaitl, that, so there's It was a very chippy game, and I honestly think that the end score 5-2 didn't really reflect how that game went, in my honest opinion. But yeah, I'm just going to say it didn't count because the way Andrew Kane's on the team and they, he doesn't deserve anything good. He's evanding taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like he's evanding accountability, too. <laughs> we yeah. should trade Evander Kane to get Nemesnikov. There, I'll say it. What is that going to do for the Red Wings? Make fans <laughs> miserable. <laughs> 
Okay, give me your give me your all all five to- or your starting five most toxic players. He's like current, right? Um, yeah. Let's go current. I'm gonna say Evander Kane, Patrick Kane, and then anyone like with really, the last name of Kane. Who's a really toxic center? Mm. I guess you could say Trevor Zegris, but like he's not like really Jonathan Taze. He's <sighs> whatever. I mean, <laughs> Jamie Ben. Oh, Jamie Ben. There, that, that's even better. Okay. Yeah. And then what about defensemen? Are there like scummy defensemen? I feel like there are. Mm, I can't think of any at this time. Thomas Grice would be the goalie. Um, and Bennington, just all of Bennington, that dream tandem right there. All of Saint Louis. Dude, it's no wonder the Blues are like terrible this year. A Bennington Grice tandem, like all they're doing is just sharing like the worst ideas with each other. Yeah, Bennington like makes me laugh though. I gotta say, does he? Just because I like. Does he say funny things? <laughs> He's. I don't know. He might be, but I like that. Like he'll come out and fight someone because I like to do that. I like fighting goalies. We need more fighting goalies, okay? I'll fight anyone. Gary Bettman, friend of the show, if you're listening to this, put the fights back. Bring back the fights. Speaking of friends of the show, one of our very good friends of the show, Philip Zadina. (laughs) And he scored a goal. Of course he did. We always knew he could do it. We've always said Philip Zadina is the man. We have always said that. Always. Consistently. And you know what? If you disagree, like if you seem to think otherwise, um... That's crazy. I don't. I don't see any examples of that. And Me neither. Maybe if, you, if you can't think of anything off the top of your head, then clearly you must be like lying. That must not be true. Must not be true. So he was good. Um, it <laughs> he was, was a, good. It was a good game against Calgary. I think that's the first time we've beaten Calgary since 2017. No shit. Right, it's eh? been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. Did you say a? I always say a. <laughs> oh no shit, a. Eh? What are you hanging out with Canadians? Oh yeah, you're hanging out with Canadians a lot now. <laughs> it's not a new thing. Team Canada or Canada, friend of the show. <laughs> Justin Trudeau, friend of the show. Oh yeah, I was talking to Justin the other day. Is he a Habs fan? He's got to be, I or think a, he Sens, is, yeah. a Sens fan, maybe. He could be a Sens because I could have sworn he his... he had a Habs jersey on when they were in the playoffs. But like, I feel like he has to wear any Canadian teams, yeah, jersey in the playoffs. Okay, I'm gonna Google it. He's, what what he... NHL team? He's a fan of the Winnipeg Jets. He has to be. <laughs> Do you think we've ever had like an NHL fan as president? Mm, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I feel like I'm trying to think of like like Teddy Roosevelt would have been a hockey fan, but I don't think, think he was around. I feel like Teddy Roosevelt would have been more of a baseball guy. And Teddy Roosevelt is into like sportsman stuff, like hunting and boxing. Yeah, like that, that's what I can see. And being general badass. Maybe like yeah, he's a Habs fan, by the way, not Teddy Kennedy? Roosevelt. Kennedy's like, I love the uh, Rangers. Rangers. Or is he a Boston fan? He's like, I love uh, the Bruins. Kennedy definitely liked hockey. He's Wait, like, what did you say Trudeau was a fan of? The Habs. No, that makes, makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. JFK definitely liked hockey. Too I don't bad know if anybody else him. did, though. Too bad 3 yeah. 3 hockey killed him. I hate when we do that. I hate when we stage military coups, like all in South America. Like, that's. We got to stop with Guilty. that. Guilty. You know? I feel bad about the whole thing. Do you think that the team felt bad that Larkin and Bergeron had to carry that win against the Canucks? Dude, that was it's a great game. That was a great game last or was it yesterday yeah, afternoon? Yesterday afternoon. Larkin put his entire dick and balls on the table to get his fucking money. <laughs> I'm serious. He flopped both. On well, the he table. should probably know every time he misses a shot or doesn't score a goal, his salary drops 250K. So. Right. But it's no wonder he did. How he, much is a goal worth? Probably half a mil. Half a mil for one goal? What do you think? 100K? 100K? What about K. how much is an all star game goal worth? Two, one. two cents? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Literally doesn't matter. Honestly, I don't really like the amount of people that keep speculating on this contract talk has made me just not want to talk about insane. the contract at all. I'm like, guys, it's, it doesn't matter. It's a fake team that makes <laughs> fake money. Like it's a it's a game that kids play. Do we really want to like bicker over dollars and cents? Yes. Larkin isn't worth this. Larkin isn't worth that. Well, the cap is going up in the next few years, so like it doesn't even matter. Larkin is just going to keep putting his shaft and nuts dick and on dick and balls on the table. But 
I liked uh, after the game yesterday when they interviewed Larkin and uh, Trevor Thompson said something, something, Jonathan Ber- Bergren. And he goes, that's how you say it? And then they had, like apparently had like a whole talk about how to say Jonathan's name. But That's great. Larkin That's was really just like, sweet. I've just been saying Jonathan Bergeron. <laughs> I saw really they asked him about Johnny Burgers. And yeah. they like, do you like that nickname? And he's like, yeah, I like Burgers. <laughs> that kid is funny. Wait, um, never in my life would I imagine watching Coffee with Carly, learning that Bergeron was on a horse, um, like a carriage with Erickson's brother and ate horse shit. Sauce Erickson or Jonathan Erickson? <laughs> They're all related. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Erickson's brother. And yeah, he talked about eating horse shit on the, on the show with Carly. You got to watch it if you haven't seen it. It's so fucking oh. hilarious. It's you really good. He's the, he is bringing in, like I'm saying the addition of cider has brought in this wave of personality into the wings. He's, he's funny. He's really funny. Also, I feel like from like, especially Swedish players, his English isn't as good as like what we're used to. So it makes it much funnier. I love him. I really do. And he's been so good. And like last night, he had two goals. Um, and his goals were fucking nice, too. And, you know, he like for both of them, he didn't really have an angle on them. And uh, I just felt myself sounding Canadian. So I got to stop talking. He is. He is one of the fastest players in Wings history as a rookie to get 10 goals. That's and he amazing. did it in, I think, like three fewer games than Wings legend Martin Furk. Martin Furk. There's a name you haven't heard in a minute. Um, I miss him. He was good. Whatever happened to him? Actually, he, I think he plays for LA. He like goes back and forth between the NHL and AHL. But he's like too good for the AHL, but right. too bad for the NHL. Just like Nadelkovic. Yeah. Anyway, sad. anyway, very sad. Um, yeah, Bergen. Yes. I'm really happy to have him on the team, though, and he's see how be great. he's yeah, like he's already popping he's off. He's fun. So. He's like he's an exciting player to watch, and I think once Elmer is good enough to be back up again, and I then you him. get you know Marco Casper makes it. Can you imagine a Casper Bergen Soderblom line? That'd be so fun. I just fucking nutted. And I did a little bit too. Yeah, I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> you always know. Did you, are you done yet? <laughs> <laughs> we already established earlier on the show that you don't let women finish, so. Wow, was that as good for you as it was for me? Oh my god. <laughs> and it's just us talking about Wings prospects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to play the Canucks again tomorrow, so when this comes out. And after that, we're going to Edmonton, Calgary. So we're going to hey, have some have late you ever been out? to that part of canada no but i will be going out to alberta over the summer i went to victoria once that was really cool it's i like, really want to go it's a very gorgeous island would highly recommend I'll the make pnw it. in general is very cool do you consider alberta part of the pacific northwest because i do not i, it's just, I, it's, I would so. consider no, I'm canadian thinking of like, prairie i'm thinking british columbia yeah Jake, what if we go say- to Regina, Saskatchewan? <laughs> Sorry, could you say that again? Regina. <laughs> Sounds like vagina. <laughs> Have you never heard of it? It's like Saskatchewan's second biggest city after Saskatoon. Yeah, how many people is that? Like 15? Probably. They're probably really that. sweet, though. Oh, yeah. We should go Let just for the, for the bit. Regina, Saskatchewan. All right. You ready? I'm going to tell you the exact population size. 228,000. Wow. Okay. It's a bustling city, it's, see? Man, it's a, this is a, a mecca, a it's, veritable mecca. It's not I, I it's not a village. It's, actually, it's pretty. It's yeah. very pretty. See, maybe we should go. Okay, yeah. I sorry if it sounded like I was being mean to Yeah, Regina. you were being mean. Shout out to Regina. Regina, friend of the show. <laughs> Great <laughs> experience. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Talk- Regina is the capital of Saskatchewan. I thought it was We should talk about the big trades so the nba trade deadline happened and everybody was bitching that like the nhl doesn't trade stars star players don't get traded why don't they ever do big trades bo horvat was traded and vladimir tarasenko were traded now while they're not you know kd or Kyrie, they're still like pretty big names i mean tarasenko Tarasenko yeah he was a fixture on that top line for the blues for years 
Bo Horvat was their first line center in Vancouver. Like these are big names that are getting moved. And there are still names like Ryan O'Reilly, um, Patrick Kane, like, I don't know. There's a, there's a ton of big boys, Jacob Chikrun that are oh, all yeah. going to be moved. He didn't play it yesterday because mm-hmm. the, yeah, they said for trade related reasons, but then the trade was never announced. So everyone's just sitting on the edge of their seats waiting. I feel like there's always like every year they always do that with chick run. And I feel like I've been like edged, like they're edging me. They're edging. Yeah. No, I think it's really like, going to happen this time though. He's going to get traded. It's really going to happen. And then Why did they happen. sit him though? There, some, there has to be something happening. Sussy. Maybe they're waiting till after the Super Bowl to like break the news. What if they do it during the halftime of the Super Bowl? That'd be crazy, dude. That would be what so if Rihanna, fun. Rihanna gets on the mic and she's like, <laughs> "The Edmonton Oilers have acquired <laughs> the chick run in exchange for a conditional first round pick and Dylan Holloway." <laughs> I would lose my fucking mind. Seriously. Oh no, nah, no, nah. Jacob Chick Run. Oh no, nah, no. Nah. You know he's from. You know he's from the same area as me. Is he? Mm-hmm. Like Florida man? Yeah. We have like friends in the same circles. That's wild. I'm pretty sure I met him at a party in high school. But I can't remember. The Jacob Chickren trade? Mm-hmm. Or not the Jacob Chickren trade. The Vlad Tarasenko trade mm-hmm. is especially funny to me because Patrick Kane like cried about it afterwards. That was, was I have like, never seen that before. That was crazy. What a baby. Like what oh, is wrong he, with him? He's like, oh, it, I'm not exactly pleased that that trade happened. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cry me a river. Like, this is like my favorite genre of interview is the one that they do at the beginning of every Blackhawk season where Jonathan Taze is just like baffled that their team isn't going to be a contender. You got to say that, though, you know? Like, no, I mean, like, uh, you know, th- I understand like, oh, you got to get out there and play hard. Though. But they're like, oh, yeah, no, like we're a contending team. We're like one of the top teams in the central. I'm like, dude, no, you're no, the fuck you're not. Like every year he's just baffled about like how bad their team is. But yeah, I don't think that they're doing that. He's going to be on that soapbox no. this season because they're like think, obviously tanking for Bedard. I think if the Blackhawks trade. I feel like they're going to get a good return for Kane. I don't think it's going to be as good as the Tarasenko return, which also was kind of mid um, for what you got. You think? But I I mean, I feel like they could have gotten a little more. They could have yeah. gotten like a better prospect from the Rangers. But I feel like if, if Kane gets traded, you know, he's got that girthy salary. So you either need to do a three-way <laughs> trade to absorb some salary or you need like to spend a lot or like not get as big of a return. And especially because Kane's been playing like shit this season. He has no motivation right now, really. No. Uh, and he has a hurt hip. That's another red flag right there. Like, he's got a busted hip. So, like, do you he's really old. want to trade for a guy with a busted hip? Right. And Taze has been playing like shit for years. So, why would you trade for him? I don't know. I think it would be funny if they were left holding the bag. What do you mean? Like, the Hawks, like, offer all these ridiculous trade proposals. I Nobody know. takes them. And then they have to, like, play the rest of the season with these guys. Well, I mean, it works out for them either way because, you know, if they tank, they get Bedard. Probably, maybe there are there is a lot of speculation that the NHL is going to rig the lottery so that Bedard goes to Chicago. If Bedard goes to Chicago, which is That's the worst case scenario, there is a high chance of that happening. But I don't like it. It would it would just ruin the whole. I don't know. It would be gross. I, would, I wouldn't. Like I it. understand I would like their it. motivation, though. Like Chicago, when they're fair weather, stupid ass motherfucking fans, they can have a good environment and like. This is an original six team. Money. You know, it looks good for them to be good. So on our point, give it to Detroit because no, I sure. want it. I because agree. I want it. There, there doesn't need to be any other reason. Because we want it. We want it. Just make it happen. Friend of the show, Gary Bettman, please, please. Did you know? Did you see the Preds prospect get banned from the queue? I added that to the notes. <laughs> did you? See? Yeah, that guy. He speared a fucking fan, dude. You, how? I, you gotta have so little cool to do that. His name is Zachary Larue, and oh, yeah, Larue yeah, yeah, yeah. in French is like happy man or something like that. Like no. Um, he's a Na- he's a Nashville Predators prospect. So that makes sense. And he's like, they. I think they bought him for like a first round pick or they drafted him with like a first round pick. And it just means happy. He's like been, his last yeah, name. happy. That's it. Which yeah. is very ironic because he's known for having like attitude problems and like has been banned and suspended before. I feel like as a writer, that's something that I can just enjoy. Like for, I can just enjoy that his name means happy in French. And he fucking I like the that. irony of it. That's what quite, I'm saying. It's funny. Quite tasty. 
It is tasty. I'll I hate the phrase tasty. It, it sounds creepy. Mm, okay. Tasty. I feel like you would be a bitch to say something sounds tasty. No. What if somebody? What if you were giving head to somebody and they said like, "Ooh, that's delicious." Like that would gross me out. That would immediately make me shrivel up. And oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't oh. say shit. I didn't say shit. Oh, your face said more than words ever could. The goal song. Oh, yeah. Do you like our goal song? Have you? Can we bring back Hey Hey Hockey Town? Yeah, I just. Uh, I fucks with it. I don't know. I think there needs to be like a banger of a song. Like fucking Are the you Hawks saying hey, Chelsea hey, Hockey Dagger. Town? I know that's not fair. It's really that song up. is a good song and it really makes me mad that it's so good. Like we need like a good hit. And tune. We also need a, like an actual goal horn, like an actual. Oh my please. god! I don't understand why this has not been changed because I know that there are so many fans who are like begging for it. Like, why? What is stopping them from changing? Chris the Iller, horn? friend of the show. I know by the you're way. a fan of the show, and I know you're listening. Just let us go fund me the new like. We do not need to go fund me. Chris no, Illich is good. Go fund me. Okay, what would you? Okay, here's here's your. <laughs> <laughs> you get to pick one of these three options. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I know it's gonna be good. <laughs> Goal horn. Oh. District Detroit. Something to do with the Tigers. Maybe like actually signing a good fucking player. I mean, this is not a fair question. I'm gonna pick District Detroit because it. It, it has so many other implications and it's this, good for the District city. Detroit is the biggest gaslighting thing I've ever seen happen in my life. It's insane. Like, they literally lied to the city the of government, Detroit yeah. and the government to get and the tax residents. breaks. And the residents. And now they, they're changing it again. Wait, they changed it again? What? Yeah, they, they changed, changed it Detroit. again. They like re reallocated because they ended up now getting more subsidies from the government. So now they're changing the more? amount. That, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. They don't. They don't give me that money. I'll make something more useful. What would you make? A parking lot. Yeah. Maybe like a Walmart. Mm, that's what Detroit needs. A Walmart. A Whole Foods right there. Right there, down the street from the other Whole Foods. An artisan burger restaurant that they charge 18 bucks for deconstructed burgers mm. and no fries. fries are what about delicious. a gentrified Coney spot where they put oh like... Oh my god, that sounds great. Instead of mustard, they put like gold flakes on it. It's it's like, um, what do you call it? Like herbed, an herbed mustard seed spread. It's the opposite it's, of Lafayette. It's like really clean. And there's like a candle lit. Minimalist design. Minimalist, yeah. <laughs> um, those shitty metal bar stools that are like uncomfortable to sit on. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like, like a from velvet the ceiling. tufted stool. Mm hmm. Yeah. We got light, light bulbs hanging from the ceiling. Maybe um, some giant... exposed pipes to give it that. Word a brick wall oh, facade on the left. Absolutely. We have a giant like script like font on the right spelling like something it. like, mm, I love chili or something like hot dog exclamation mark. Mm, yeah that's and good. all of the hot dogs are like eight bucks at least and they're smaller than a lafayette dog yeah but you know that bread uh, is gonna be good oh yeah, the bread's gonna be great bread, but that's our story that's, that's how we would fix district detroit i forgot what we were even talking about <laughs> <laughs> i was so immersed in that i was like i don't know what this is but i'm i'm here for the bit <laughs> sometimes that happens we'll just start going on a on a, on a tangent I mean, and i'm like yeah we talked about the fucking ottoman empire for <laughs> <laughs> we talked this is this a bad episode um i don't think we've ever had a good episode <laughs> i think what what number episodes is 30 i think out of the 30 episodes like five of them were good i would say the rest were great then oh mm -hmm. and you know why they were great because we did it because you and talk. me because of our friendship Holding this podcast together. I was going to say because of Tom, but like, you oh. know, that works too. I love when people talk about our chemistry. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, Jake's my boyfriend. I like the tweet <laughs> of, though. what's the one? I simp for you. I, I literally pulled up the Twitter oh, yeah. and I saw the DM and I went, oh, <laughs> who do you think he's simping? Oh, did yeah. Did he ever answer? Who did he, who did he simp for? He, he had a very long explanation about it. He said, oh. I just started following you. 
Now, this is a friend of the show, correct? A friend of the show. I don't okay, know cool. him at all. I just saw somebody DM'd our, our Twitter account. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have fun with this. He said, hold on, let me pull it up. Here, I'll pull up one. Hello, are you looking for a part-time job to supplement your income? You've been invited to by the Amazon platform to do a regular part-time job. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been looking for. Amazon platform is promoting, comma, you can work from oh, home. Oh, they have used punctuation? For Amazon platform at home. Only need to work 1H. One one 15 hour. to $200 sign per day. The number of places is limited. Please add what right. space app. Yeah, this is bad. So this guy said, I didn't know there were three hosts. I just followed you guys recently because wings, all caps. But if I had to guess, I'd say Jake. And then he wrote, if it's Maddie, then I take it back. The sim comment, because then it's weird as fuck. I haven't had a chance to listen to the pod, though. I was going to start this week. All right. If you're listening, unnamed person, and this is the first episode you've listened to, friend of the show. It was... It was a team effort of Jake and I DMing you. Oh, and then I responded, smart man who would only sim for Jake. He liked that smart. one. Yeah. Smart. I so love he, that. It was still a mystery at that point for him. He'll never. All right, you, you simps. I think we've taken up too much of their time. Um, Why do people listen to this? They want to be a part of a parasocial relationship with us. And because we love them. Because we're the only podcast that shows that we love them too. Sure, you can get giveaways and Patreons for other podcasts, but with us, you know what you get? Dick. Love. Oh. Dick, too, if you want. But I can't provide, so I'm whoring you out, Jake. I also can't provide because I'm spoken for. So, Tom? Tom? Sorry, bud. It's up to you, bud. Tom's our podcast whore. We need mm-hmm. a favor. We need some funding. Need podcast prostitute. <laughs> podcast prostitute. That's his new he, producer, prostitute. producer and prostitute. Love it. Escort. Prostitute. <laughs> prostitute. Prostitute. He puts the oh, yeah, prostitute. Yeah, with a D. That's pretty good. Thank you. With a D. Dual in the D. All right. You and Tom Bye, everybody. are doing Ds. We love you. Doing right. Ds. Okay. <laughs>